Greetings, welcome to So Uncomfortably Close to My Face. You can see the silver hairs of my chinny chin chin cam. This is unnecessarily close. Uh, right, this is a, a waffly talky head video. I'm going to talk about Invmark and what we've learned so far because Invmark's been out for a, a couple of months. We've got oh, 200 plus entries now on the leaderboard. That's a lot of data. That's a lot of workstations. A massive variety of systems up there. And we've never had a single place with all of this data on it to kind of make sense of how different hardware performs on Inventor. I've been benchmark testing Inventor on different hardware for six years, and everything's always been fragmented. I've had to write it down, and you, you lose it all. And it's, it's, so it's just to have this is fascinating to me. So I want to just go through it and just point out some things that are quite interesting that's, that sort of jump out initially. And, yeah, talk also to some people who've uploaded some scores that are a bit out of place and just talk about why they might be there and what they should potentially be doing next. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes from there. So, if you're not familiar with what Invmark is, uh, I'll not go over it in, in its entirety. But it's a benchmark test developed or designed by me, developed by Cala Group. It may, if you're in Europe, check out the links at the top. And if you if you're after any Autodesk services or uh, online or on site training software, sales or uh, installation or their experts programs, quite a, a useful thing to know about or program development bespoke software development configurators. They do pretty much everything. I can personally vouch for them. I've used them in my day job for 10 plus years. I approached these guys to work on Invermark with me. We've both done it pro bono. And uh, their commitment to this project has been stellar. So thanks very much to Karak for their ongoing commitment to this. And if yeah, if you're in Europe and you're interested in any order services, check out Karak's link at the top. Okay. So yeah, it's a series of tests on your workstation or laptop, uh, Inventor 2021 or 2022. At the end of the tests, it gives you a score. It does drawing tests, assembly tests, pattern tests, ray tracing, simulation, graphics, tons of stuff. Gives you a final score, grades it with a little nice, easy to digest kind of category where it's efficient, it's fair, it's poor, it's epic, it's elite, that kind of thing. And then it gives you sub scores as well, like multi core, single core modeling, etc. And you can compare how your workstation does against others. Uh, and then it puts you on the leaderboard and grades you. So that's it. In a nutshell is the test and the leaderboard. <laughs> There's a lot more to it than that. I'm just summarizing it. So what I want to start with is just a couple of things that I, I personally want to improve on. I'm acutely aware, right? I'm under no illusions that a benchmark test is not a game, right? It's not something that I can, I, I can't with a straight face say to people, please keep using it. I expect people to keep using this daily, right? It's, it's a it's a benchmark test. Once you've run it, like what else do you do with it, right? I, I'm I'm acutely aware of that, but there's some things in Envmark that kind of would entice people to come back to it, and not necessarily uh, through a favor or anything like that, but because they would want to. We just haven't realized them yet. We haven't brought them to fruition yet, and that's some of the things that I want to work on. Uh, but first. One of the things that I want to bring in is, for my own benefit more than anything else, it'll help everyone actually, is the ability to search the leaderboard. This is driving me nuts, if I'm honest. Like, I haven't got any more access to the leaderboard than you guys, uh, and I can't search the leaderboard. If I want to find a Threadripper or a Xeon 2178G or something, I've got to click through every single <laughs> entry until I find it. Uh, just be able to search. I just type a single word in and search through the, the entries and bring back any entry that matches that search word. Right. I mean, we did have filters. We still do have... The filters are quite good, right? You can show desktops or show laptops that have run Inventor 2022, and then those filters will work. We were going to bring in filters like, you know, Intel or AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, and we just never got around to it because like, where do you stop with that? Do you have... Do you then list every GPU? Do you then list every CPU? Uh, it, it just didn't seem worth the effort, especially when... If we just had a single keyword and just search through the entire leaderboard, that would be a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's that. So the search is something that I, <laughs> I urgently need. Uh, let's clear the filters off. We need better comparison tools as well, so being able to compare one result with another. We also need the ability to tell people what, what's a good system. right? We've got all this data here, but... If someone was to ask, like, what system should I buy? Like, what is a optimum PC? We need something for that, you know, being able to have, like, a baseline spec or something. I don't know. We're working on that. 
Uh, it's not as easy as you might think because the bar's always moving. Uh, like, for example, when I built, when I designed this test, this score of 45,000 was the highest number I thought was possible <laughs> when I was designing the test. And then within a week, in fact, no, a, a couple of days of releasing Invmark, what I thought was the highest score jumped up to 54,000 within a couple of days. Uh, so, yeah, the bar's always the bar's always going higher. So if you say, well, 54,000 is, that's the best. You know, next month it could be up again. So it's not as easy as you might think. Uh, but finally, the the one that I'm I'm kind of wanting for the long game and the one that I think is something that's going to make this more than a benchmark test and will bring people back who are... Not everyone, right? Not everyone's going to be into this, but the hardcore enthusiasts is my hardware logging. At the moment, when I'm talking to people about the hardware logging, it kind of glosses over them because it doesn't mean anything at the moment. There's no... There's no, there's no meaning to the data, right? You know, the I'm logging at the moment every sensor in the PCs. Every time a test runs, I log CPU frequency, CPU loads, GPU loads, RAM utilization, fan speeds, um, G, G, GPU VRAM. Every sensor in your PC. There's no personal sensitive information, nothing like that. It's just, it's just motherboard sensors. But they're getting logged whilst the test's running. The data's being uploaded to the leaderboard, but then it doesn't go anywhere. I've produced a guide on how to manually convert that into a graph. But unless you know what you can do with that data, you, nobody's going nobody's to do that. So I want that data to be automatically converted into a chart on the website so people can easily digest what it means, right? Is your CPU getting too hot? So whilst when the drawn test begins, for example, which is the first... Well, actually. The solid sweep is probably the first hard-hitting part of the test. Does the CPU get excessively hot? And then whilst the CPU is getting excessively hot, do your frequencies begin to drop down as a result? Because that is a dip in performance. As soon as your CPU frequencies dip because of excessive heat, well, then that's where you're losing productivity. You're losing performance. And then that's a trigger for someone to then go and do something about that. Better cooling, change the... I don't know, reseat the CPU, put some different thermal paste on it or something. It, it's just a trigger to let you know there's something wrong. And it's not necessarily to make your test better. It's just to let you know that in day-to-day -day workflows, you've got an issue there. And that's got multiple, use, that's multiple uses there. So if the graphs are easy to digest, they're easy to, to make sense of, I think... That, that's something that I, I would want to keep coming back to. And if I would want to keep coming back to it, then I think other people would as well. So longer term, that's something that uh, I want to work on and, and get on the site. But in terms of the data, right, there's there's a few surprises, but I mean, surprises are subjective. Every time you say something surprising, there's always numerous people who are not surprising at all. <laughs> but the first one that surprised me was the sheer number of people who are using Zen 3 in the Autodesk community. Uh, I just didn't expect it, to be honest. Uh, I guess because most of these systems are custom builds, right? You know, custom desktop PC, uh, custom desktop PC. These are all cobbled together parts, bought separately and then built. Most of these people, I suspect, will be viewers of general tech channels, so they'll be receiving the messaging that Ryzen is good. So... That's probably what's fueled them to to make the purchase, uh, and it's worked out that they're actually very good for Autodesk. Which is, you don't need to go far to find someone or read something from someone who says that Autodesk software is not optimized for AMD. You don't need to go far. You just do a search for that. You'll find someone saying that. Uh, well, it's clearly, it's not the case because uh, they demolished my 10900K. Like I say, my 10900K was 45,000 points. Zen 3 came in. Even the 5600Xs destroyed it. So, uh, yeah, that, this is what I could do with a search. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I can really do with a search. There's a 5600X, got 49,000 points. And uh, my 50, my 10900K could only get 45,000. That 5600X, that's a 200, 200 plus dollar part. The value in that is incredible. So, yeah, you, so you can see why they became so popular. Uh, I mean, I say that, you know, up until now, there was no real way of, of knowing that, that it was that good, but it is, <laughs> it clearly is. 
So yeah, I was surprised at how many people are on Zen 3. I was surprised at how good they were. And I'm also surprised... Ah, oh, I don't know how to present this opinion. I'll just state it as a fact, right? There is quite a lot of variation between Zen 3. For example, Ned, he's at number one. Well, he's at number one of the Zen 3s, right? He's got 5800X at 53,000 points. He's got 16 gigs of 36, 66 megahertz RAM, right? At 53,000 points. All the way down here, uh, is it this one here? Right, here is... Cyrus Nilsson, he has a 5800X, 16 gigs of RAM at 3600 megahertz, right? Almost exactly the same. 5800X, there's like 66 megahertz difference in the RAM. It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. In fact, he's got a better GPU, he's got a 2070. But he's like 3000 points behind. That's not margin of error, that's miles behind. I see it's miles behind. It's significantly behind. It's, it's just it's more than margin of error. But look at the difference between Ned's and Cyrus, why? Where's that 3,000 points come from? How has Ned managed to eke an extra 3,000 points out of essentially the same system? I've seen Ned's PC. It's a mini ITX build. It's a little box, like this big. It's tiny. The reason is Ned's an enthusiast, and Ned has extensively fiddled with his RAM timings. He's went into, I can't remember the name of the utility, but it's this RAM Tune, tuning, timing, utility for uh, for Ryzen. And he's tweaked all of his RAM timings, and that's managed to eke out the, the extra 3,000 points. Uh, me, I bought, personally bought, a 5800X myself, 16 gigs of RAM. I, I mean, it's only 3,200 megahertz RAM, uh, but I couldn't get more than 50,000 points myself. Uh, it, this is where kind of, you know, or RAM likes, uh, Ryzen likes faster RAM. Sure. But here's me with 50,500 points on 3,200 megahertz, and here's Cyrus on 50,300 on 3,600 megahertz. It's not only about the frequencies. It's about the timings as well. I'm of the opinion that's a bit too much to expect most people to have to think about timings. And it's not an insignificant jump. Uh, you, to be honest, you're probably not going to notice. In real-world use, you're not going to notice, like when you're using Inventor, the difference between a PC from 50,000 to 53,000, if I'm honest. Um, but I, the fact you can get that much performance out of it by fitting with your RAM, a lot of people would probably argue that that's the same as as a CPU overclock. It's, it's tweaking a component beyond its stock factory settings to make it behave differently. So you could argue it's the same as a CPU overclock. So I'll, I'll just hold back on... I, I, just, I just personally don't like having that much variables, that many variables um, that affect the performance. Whereas Intel, for example, who are at the top of the leaderboard with an 11900K, did that with 23, uh, 2133 megahertz RAM. It was pretty much out of the box, just demolished everything. And that leads me on to my next biggest surprise, perhaps possibly the biggest surprise that I did not, I just, nobody could have seen this coming. And nobody could have seen this coming because the general tech press, uh, the gaming YouTubers have touted 11th gen as being, well, to coin a phrase, to use their words, shit. They've said it's absolutely hopeless. It's a waste of money. It's a, it's not really a step down from 10th gen, but it's got fewer cores and it's not a generate, it's not a good enough generational jump from 10th gen. And I, I don't I don't blame them for that. I mean, their data will have, their data will have validated those claims. They, they didn't make that up, right? That's genuine, a genuine conclusion from their genuine valid tests. However, they've presented a conclusion that's kind of tarred everything with that brush. And it's clearly not the case because for Autodesk software, 11th gen is absolutely dominant. And by dominant, I mean it's a 20% gain from 10th gen to 11th gen. My 10900K could not get more than 45,000 points. First on the leaderboard is an 11900K with 55,000 points. That's a 20% jump from 10900K to an 11900K. That's insane. 
Now, we don't know the details of this PC, but the fact that this guy doesn't have an XMP profile applied on it suggests this probably isn't overclocked. If he's forgot to apply his XMP profile, I would doubt this is overclocked. But I don't know. That's the thing. I, I don't have, unfortunately, access to an 11th gen CPU. I'm not on anyone's A-list when it comes to getting CPU, so I don't have one to play with. But number one is 11th gen. Number two is 11th gen. Number three is 11th gen. They, they're they starting to dominate. As they're now creeping into the market, they're going to dominate uh, the leaderboard. And they're doing it without needing, without needing much tweaking by the looks of it. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe number one is overclocked and I, I don't know, but he hasn't got his XMP profile applied. But either way, uh, 64 gigs of RAM does not matter, right? That doesn't make the PC go faster. My test, it's my test. I designed this. I know how my test works. The test will perform exactly the same with 16 gigs of RAM to a terabyte of RAM. It's It doesn't matter. Having more RAM does not make a test go faster. It does not make Inventor go faster. It does not make your PC go faster unless you're running out. Uh, so yeah, that's that was my biggest surprise so far was that 11th gen absolute dominating things. And because it goes against the narrative that we've been receiving from the gaming channels, which, like I said, I don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not accusing anyone of fuckery or anything. It's just the narrative is not entirely true across the board. In our world, in CAD, 11th gen quite clearly is the, is the number one at the moment. And if it's great for Autodesk and Vendor, it's going to be great for Fusion 360, it's going to be great for Revit, it's going to be great for AutoCAD. Autodesk software tends to be quite similar in how its uh, how its architecture is and how it responds to CPUs. So, yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out as well is the people who have uploaded uh, less than ideal scores. <laughs> so, like, let's, let's jump down quite far down the leaderboard uh, and find somebody who's... Hey, number 41. So, number 41 is... 5900X. Uh, I, I know this guy. I've spoke with him on the forums, I believe. But he's got a 5900X. 12-core processor. He's got 3600 megahertz RAM at 32 gigs. And he's only scored 40,000 points. Now, we've just spent the last 10 minutes talking about how Zen 3 at 3600 megahertz is around 50 plus thousand points. But this one's 40. So something's clearly gone wrong here. Now, I've, I've actually had people on the Inventor Forum kicking off at me about my my tests broken. <laughs> Genuinely, like, oh, there's something wrong with your test. My PC should be faster than this. No, no, I mean, it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that, I'm afraid. Uh, if, if you're pulling a score that's far, far away from other PCs that are a similar spec, then there's something wrong with your PC. Uh, and I've experienced this myself. Uh, over in the corner of my room, I've got a, a HP workstation, which is first world problem. It's my Plex server, or it used to be anyway. And because it was on 24-7, I set the Windows power plan to power saving mode. I installed Infomark on it, ran it, and it was hugely lower than it should have been. I mean, I was in like high 20,000s. It should have been sort of high 30,000s. And I spent, I lost hours of my life on it. I was speaking to the developer going, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. Why, why is the test running really slow? Why, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Was, this was like sort of mid-development. I was like, this, we've done something. You, you've done something. <laughs> what have you done? And it, it, turned, it was the Windows power plan. Uh, so there's always, if, if there's something that's not quite right like this, it, there's, there's a good chance that there's something set on the PC that's causing that slowdown because two PCs with a 5900X should be falling within the same ballpark. Um, and a 10,000 point gap is way, way too far apart. So I, I would be looking at that and acting on it. And the reason for that is because this guy isn't just suffering during a benchmark test, right? This guy's suffering in his day-to-day -day work. So if this guy's using that PC for his, his actual work, he's running a far slower PC than he should have otherwise had. And he's paid for, right? And it's, it's not going to, you know, we're not talking about, you know, and this is... This is things that inventors just doing in the background. Well, this is passive performance. This is things where you set inventor away and just wait for it to finish. And yeah, he's, he's just not getting the performance that he's paid for. So I would, and that's what my leaderboard's for. Like, I don't know. I just don't understand why someone would have stopped there. Maybe it's just different mentalities. But if that was me, I would have looked at what other people are getting, looked at my score, and then I would have worked on it 
retested, worked on it, retested until I fixed the problem. And then I was comfortable and confident that my PC is where it should be. I would have just left it there. You know what I mean? But I don't know, different, maybe different mindsets, but yeah. Those, so those, I think well, that's probably long enough. Those are the first few interesting things that I saw. Uh, the more you go through this, the more fascinating things that you see, like people pushing out Coffee Lake, 8700K Coffee Lake generation system, putting out 40,000 points. That's a spectacular score for a Coffee Lake system. That's like one step behind. That's a, that's a dozen points behind a ninth gen i7. That's that's outstanding. <laughs> that's an outstanding score. Uh, <laughs> and then you've got 3700, yeah, uh, average. It wasn't It wasn't great. Like Zen, the first generation of Ryzen, I think it was just Zen, was terrible. Absolutely shocking uh, for Autodesk software. And that was what spawned a lot of the Autodesk don't write their software for, for, uh, for AMD processors. But I think I've got a system somewhere in here that's a 1700X. Love to be able to search this, but I can't. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's my 3,600, 38,000 points. So 39,000. Uh, not too shabby, but you know, for the cost of this build, I mean, this is my $600, roughly $600 workstation Slayer build. That's not a bad, that's not a bad score for a $600 PC. But the problem I've got at the moment, I'd love to be able to do another one, like an updated version of this, but with PC parts being so outrageously hard to find at the moment, especially graphics cards. Just can't do them, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah, that's, I think, I reckon, like, with a, with a 5600X, you could probably put together a, a build that's in the top 15 for less than $800. If, if PC parts and the prices were available and stabilized, you could probably put together something like that, and I would love to do that, but I can't because... Yeah, just availability isn't there. So that'll do it for this one. Uh, check out the leaderboard, mate. Have a good dive through it. There's, there's just loads of little hidden gems in here. And if you're looking for a new workstation, check out the leaderboard, mate. Just see what's in here. See what what's good, what's not. You'll see all kinds of interesting things, like how graphics cards just don't matter. I mean, take take Ned, for example, right? Ned, uh, for, for a while, he was at number one. I always spoke about this. This should have probably been at the start of the video because this is, it's not a surprise, but I've talked about this to death on the channel and done dedicated videos on this. But Ned has a GeForce Gaming GTX 1070 Ti. Now, back in the day when this was released, a good what, five years ago or something, that was a mid-tier gaming card. Its specs are pretty good, right? It still holds up today. It's a pretty good gaming card. Uh, but it's a Pascal generation mid-tier gaming card. Now, Ned scored... 2917 on the graphics test on Inventor 2022. Okay, I've spoken at length with Autodesk about this because in their What's New document for Inventor 2022, they say that Inventor is now partly GPU accelerated. They leverage GPU acceleration in Inventor's graphics engine. Turns out it's very, very minimal. Very, very minimal. It's a certain graphic style and it's very light. So it's easy to market this, especially if you're NVIDIA, to say that the entire application is GPU accelerated, therefore Quadros are now the best product for 3D CAD slash Autodesk Inventor. So let's take a look at that, shall we? So uh, 2917 with a gaming grade mid-tier 1070 Ti. Let's take a look at the Quadro RTX 4000. This is, by all accounts, one of, that's uh, currently, a very popular Quadro card. It's still on sale today. If you spec a workstation now, you'll be given this as an option, right? The the replacement, the Ampere version, the A4000, isn't really in circulation yet. So this is still what you'll get, the RTX 4000. By all accounts, the specs are quite similar to the 1070 Ti. It's roughly the same number of CUDA cores, TMUs and ROPs, but it's GDDR6 VRAM as opposed to GDDR5. So in theory, it should be better at accessing the frame buffer and reading from it. Uh, but it's a newer generation, so it's it's not really like for like. It's not apples to apples. But it's a Quadro as well. It's a professional card, professional drivers. And I still, to this day, get criticized on all my Quadro videos from people who have no idea what they're talking about, who attack me, <laughs> verbally, anyway, 
uh, with the whole, you don't know what you're talking about. Quadros are clearly better. You just haven't tried X, Y, Z in Inventor or this, this, that, and the other. I'm like, mate, just, I've, I've given you a leaderboard. I don't know what more you want from me. So let's take a look at <laughs> this leaderboard. So 2,917 graphics score. Bear in mind as well. Sorry, I need to clarify this. My graphics test leaves nothing on the table. I've got all the visual styles covered. Shaded, realistic, wireframe only, hidden lines. Uh, I've got selection, test. So I've got parts selected whilst orbiting. I've got in-place edit whilst orbiting. I've got assembly orbits, part orbits with all the different styles for assemblies and parts. There's nothing left on the table. I've covered everything when it comes to the graphics tests. So 1070 Ti, 2917. Let's take a look at Scott Gibbs, shall we? Who has said Quadro RTX 4000. What do you think his graphics score was on Inventor 2022? Scott scored 1,627 points on Inventor 2022 with his RTX 4000. There you go. Case closed. <laughs> End of discussion, mate. End of discussion. And this is when everyone goes, oh, yes, but a CPU. Deb-. I know it is. I know it is. I know how the graphic. I know how it works. But the point being, it's just graphics cards just, just, just don't matter. They just don't matter. In fact, do you want to see something even more comical? There's somebody on the leaderboard with a GTX 5. 50 Ti, right? 550 Ti. Let's see what his graphics score is. <laughs> I don't even know which version of Inventor he's running. It's probably Inventor 2021. Uh, that was 2022. 1992. He scores 19... He got more points in the graphics test with a 550 Ti than Scott did with a Quadro RTX 4000. GTX 550, 550 Ti. The specs on this will be absolutely horrendous. 192, look at it, look at that. 192 CUDA cores, one gig of VRAM. I don't even know what architecture this is. Fermi, Fermi architecture, 40 nanometer process size. I'm sorry, but that just puts the whole thing to bed. Just stop, just stop. I mean, this this is ahead, 1992, with a 550 Ti, that's ahead of people who have an RTX 3090. There'll be people who will eventually upload results with a Quadro A6000, who will probably score a lower graphics score than this 550 Ti. So all I'm saying is, I don't need to say anything. The result, the results are there. <laughs> but there you go. Just that, just that, just doing that and finding little gems like, oh, I love it, I love it. I just want to be able to search it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Uh, that was a long one, 25 minutes, but uh, I could just dive through there forever. Thanks again for watching, and uh, check out Karak in the links above if you're interested in uh, getting some more of their services. Uh, check out the links in the description as well. Uh, I'm launching some new services myself. Uh, one's called the Workstation Studio, where I'm going to be putting together workstation builds for people, which is quite closely linked to this. It's not going to be for everyone. It's a bespoke service, mostly for businesses, uh, charging a fee to find and source uh, off-the-shelf workstations for businesses. It's not going to be a replacement for people who home users who want to find a, 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 a part or something. Do you know what I mean? This is a, a business-to-business service. So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, it's just a way to sort of finance a lot of the things that I'm doing, uh, which is something I need to begin doing. So that's in there. Uh, I've also got links to... Autodesk promotions, uh, my affiliate links to Autodesk licenses and my plural site links down there as well. So thanks very much and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.